Carlo, if you would start us out. And then we'll go any direction. Uh, brother, what's your name again? Albert. Okay, if you'll be the last one. Okay. And he's waiting to see someone. He's waiting to see someone. So, uh, Brent, come on up here so you're not behind. Come on up if you want. So let's really pray. Yeah, come on up. Let's dedicate this time to God that the Holy Spirit will really, really bless. You can take this microphone off, um, brother. Thank you. Ah, good. <laughs> let's pray. This is a short prayer. Short prayer. Okay. Okay, Lord, so to start this season of prayer again, oh Lord, we'd just like to thank you, Lord. Like in the parable of the fig tree, Lord, in Luke chapter 12, you, Lord, would extend some time, Lord, to take extra care, Lord, so we would bear fruit. So this morning, Lord, we would like to pray once again for the Holy Spirit to be upon us, Lord, in this extended time. Each minute is precious, O oh Lord. So, let, Lord, let us not let the devil have a foothold this morning, Lord. At this time, we will be dedicated to you, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just like to thank you for this opportunity, Lord, Lord. We have this extension of the tree. Um, we shall be with all of us here in the circle and that's online. And even when we post it on YouTube, we will be with others also. Mm -hmm. We pass it down as we speak. There is one, we will live. We will be with all of our hearts here. We will receive it and we will share it also. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so the Father, I want to add, um, Lord, you know, this leadership training for the seminar, and Satan really wants this to be taken away from us. So Lord, I really want to pray that this seminar will be successful, Lord, and that we will learn a lot from this, Lord. Mm -hmm. God, uh, your son Jesus is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. And it's in Jesus' name that we come. And God, just wash away my sins. Make my heart white as snow. Look into the hearts of my friends here in this circle and do the same. Do not let us be a distraction to what the Spirit of God is about to do in the next couple of hours. We dedicate this time to you and we ask for your help. Would you please, in the name of Jesus, would you please put a hedge of protection around each one of us so that we're used the Spirit, <clears throat> that we're not, we're not uh, used by your antagonist. Would you please put your hand on the technology uh, which was so much better yesterday, but still had some problems. Please do not let the technology distract the pastors or us from what you want to do. We don't have a very long time, so please even shape the topics of what needs to happen. And in the end, Lord, let your words be spoken, Lord, and let your will be done, Lord. Surrender. We don't know what's going to happen next. Check my test. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But Lord, there's no limit to what the Holy Spirit can do. For more prayer, has more power, Lord. Yes. May you not want sound? Check my test. Okay, the promise. That those who hunger and thirst for righteousness you, will be filled, Lord. And also help us, Lord, not to lead us astray just because of little discouragements and little things that will distract us to fall. You see. So I pray, Lord, that you will continue to protect us, Lord, from temptations, Lord, from trials, that we may be able to preach and share the gospel boldly, Lord, just as like Elijah did. I also want to pray, Lord, that you give us a character like David who chased after you, after your own heart. Mm -hmm. Also for Daniel, Lord, who is being loyal to you, Lord. And for Elijah, who is being boldly in your, for your presence. Let's have one more prayer and then the final prayer here in the circle. Lord, I'd like to lift up all the technology and our closing prayer 
loving Father God, we are here before you. We ask you to forgive our sins. That the wind will extinguish our ears, your hands may cuts our feeble parts, that we may understand your word. You are for us, Lord. We pray and ask you to give that hunger so that we may be going after your word. May you give us the pure of pure heart so that we may be in need of your word, the taste, so that we may taste, the, taste, the, taste after the water of life that you will give us this hour. And we pray for the bread that Jesus had prayed with teach his disciples. Give us our daily bread. We pray for the bread that you will bake in heaven. May you give each of us this hour. And may your will that is in heaven will be done on earth. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think they're about ready. Uh, students, I would like to ask if we can have um, maybe four of you a volunteer right now to lead us in two songs. So if you can work on that just real quick, find four of you, and just be ready. Uh, how are we doing this morning, pastors, online? Okay, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up so I can see if our audio is good. Praise the Lord. Good. Do we have uh, one more screen or not? Pastor Kenneth. Pastor Kenneth. Do we have one more screen? All on one screen. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. Uh, I can't, uh, let's see what Pastor, let's see what Pastor Israel is saying. One second, Pastor Israel. A little louder. One, one second. One second. Check my, there's somebody in the book. Pastor Israel, they're trying to get the audio for you. Check. Check my check, check. Check my testing. Check, check my testing. Is it okay now? Check, check. Okay, Pastor Israel. Go ahead. Testing one, two, three. Good morning, everybody. You have to remove the echo. Remove the echo and then uh, volume. We need more volume. Okay. Remove the echo and volume. Okay, let's try it now. Yeah, that's better. Uh, pastors, is this sounding better? Yeah, a lot better. Okay. Very good. Pastor Israel, if you would begin, and I'd like to, uh, uh, with prayer, and if you want to share any, uh, any quick introduction of this day, just a, just a moment of what, you, uh, what do you have on your heart uh, for these, this short time together this morning before I go. If you can just share with the pastors and with our live audience, and then have an opening prayer. So let's give our first ears. Of all, first of all, Pastor, we are grateful and thankful to the Lord because because he, he, he has allowed you to stay for one more meeting. I know this is very important. I know the Lord is working. And the Lord is working mightily and powerfully through you. And so he allowed you to stay for one more meeting, I think. And uh, because of that, we want to praise the Lord. We want to glorify his name. We want to worship him more. And may this special meeting that we have today be an important meeting and we can get as many things that we can get to use as a tool in the discipleship of our, of, of our members. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let's pray. Father God, this morning we come to you and we invite your presence. We invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to minister to each and every one of us, Lord, we on the online and also the students. Pray for the double portion of your power for Pastor Don to lead us today. This we ask in the mighty and precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
for a moment. We're going to worship the Lord Jesus, and our students have a song. Go ahead. And do, you have a, do you have a microphone for the students? Okay. We're coming right to you. Of the Lord forever, I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I be sung, thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness, with my mouth will make known thy faithfulness generation I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever I will sing sing I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever I will sing of the mercies of the Lord Amen, that's good for right now and we welcome everybody here back today. This is, uh, this is something that God has arranged. It's not arranged by us. And as soon as I found out I had a flight leaving later, I called up Pastor Israel. I should say I messaged him. And uh, I said, you know, I said I'm impressed to offer this time if, if you want it. And so we're, this is sacred time. It's not even our time. I don't consider this as time we own. It's time, uh, this is God's time. So, uh, pastors, since we're interested in growing as disciples, so I'm going to direct this question first of all to our, our online audience. Before we give new information, what must we always do with someone we're discipling before we give new information? So if you're willing to speak to that, based on our last two trainings, raise your hand and uh, please... Uh, Pastor Kenneth will call on you when he sees your hand. Just put your hand up and Pastor Kenneth will call on you. What must we always do before we give new truth when we're discipling someone? I see a hand over there, Pastor Kenneth, on the right, to the right. Put your hand up if you're willing to speak. Okay, Pastor Gavinia, you are recognized. Good morning, uh, Pastor Don, and morning. to everybody. Before we proceed to the new truth, we have to hear the testimony and the report of our participants. Amen. Thank you so much. We do that because we want to know how is the truth sticking? Right, students? We want to know how is it sticking. We're following through with them. So to our online audience, pastors, Please take, this needs to be very brief, please take the next four minutes, five minutes maximum. I hope you have already decided who you're going to call on the pastoral team of the Cavite Mission and ask them, what did you do with the challenges from yesterday? And ask, uh, how did they do with asking God to wake them up? How did they do with making uh, the surrender to Jesus as Lord the first thing this morning. How did they do with going to the Word of God? So, and local audience, let's do that in twos right now. And the next four or five minutes is yours. Uh, pastors, if we're on the same page, uh, please put your thumbs up if you're ready to do that. Okay, good. I'm... Is there a question, pastors? Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll start the timer.
Do you know what to do? Pastors, I'm hoping, I, I need to not be on mic. Uh, pastors, I'm hoping that you are calling one of your colleagues right now. Some of you are on the phone, but some of you are just smiling at me. Uh, uh, so I'm hoping you're actually doing this accountability moment right now in twos, either with someone in your home or on, on the phone. This is a critical part of this discipling training. Thank you so much. I hope you'll just do that right now. You still have a few minutes to call a colleague and ask them and let them ask you these questions. Thank you so much. They might not be able to use their phone because they're using their phone. Oh, okay. Pastors, how many of you cannot use your phone because you're using your phone to watch? Raise your hand if that's your situation, okay. <laughs> okay, so those of you who can't use it, then uh, you have grace. But if you, if you can make a phone call, that would be awesome right now. Someone can even call Pastor Kenneth. He's right here. He's, he's just waiting for a phone call. We have just one more minute uh, for our online team, one more minute. And then uh, pastors, I will be coming to you and asking those accountability questions. So pastors, if you can be ready, that would be great. Just one minute left. One minute left, one minute left. One minute left, okay? One minute left. Okay, my friends, we need to come back together again. The timer is up. So, uh, students, if you can focus right here, I'm going to talk to online, and then we'll come to you, to our online friends. Okay, to our online friends, I want to know, 
how did it go asking a colleague about those priorities from the last two days? I'm asking, how did it go for you and your colleague? If someone's willing to speak to that, then that would be great. Students, if you're talking, if we can bring it down right now, okay? And let's listen to see what they say, then I'm going to come to the students next. Okay, Pastor Israel, we'll start with you. Yeah. This morning, I woke up at uh, 4.30 mm -hmm. and spent more time in prayer and in reading of the Word. Amen. Time is so fast, I never realized it's almost 6 when I finish. Amen. Question, Wonderful. Pastor. I've never, I have never enjoyed the Word of God before done like this, you know. Did, did God wake you up or did your alarm clock wake you up? Yeah, the Lord's alarm clock. Amen. <laughs> what do you say, students? Amen. Amen. Um, good, Pastor. Pastor, uh, Israel, one more question. Did you remember? Can I ask you a tough question? Yeah. Did you remember first thing this morning to surrender to Jesus as Lord with everything you have, your agenda, yes, everything. Yes, 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 yes. yes Praise yes. God. That Amen. That is the first thing that I, I did when I woke up. Amen. You know, Pastor Israel and my... I my went to the and, uh, yeah. Pastor Israel and my online friends there and local, uh, if I would not have surrendered first thing this morning to Jesus, I will guarantee you that we would not be having this online time here together because it was not my original idea. I was just thinking, how can I pack? How can I get ready? Do last things. So when we surrender, it actually helps us, students and pastors, it helps us uh, be ready for the adventure of God for the day. If we don't surrender, then we're not ready for an adventure with God. We're ready to just do our own thing, which frankly is boring. It's a routine if you're not on the adventure of God. It's, it's a, absolutely a routine. Any other pastor... Uh, pastor, tell me, some other pastor, how does it affect you to know that the next uh, time before you get new information, you're actually going to ask a colleague and your colleague's going to ask you how you're implementing these things? How does this affect you? I'm asking for another pastor to answer, please. And then I'm going to ask the students. I'm looking for a, a hands up somewhere. Who will speak to that? I want to get somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Anybody? Who will speak to that? Time is going quick, so I am hoping one of you will, will speak to that. Which one? Use the microphone if you're seeing someone. Is someone Andrew, raising? Are you raising your hand, Andrew? How does this affect you to ask these questions to a colleague and have your colleague ask you these questions? How many of you did that this morning? How many of you asked these questions to a colleague and a colleague asked you these questions? Pastor Indriya. Okay. Pastor Faina, are you raising your hand? Okay, no, they're, they're responding with my question. Okay, so two people, two people on the team uh, talk to a colleague about these. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, for, for a colleague there in the plaid shirt that has, it, that has his hand behind his back. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Ronil, are you... Would you tell us, how does it affect you, brother? How does it affect you to ask these questions to a brother and have them ask you these questions? Come again, come again. Okay, uh, yes, yes, I can hear you now. I'm asking you, how does it affect you to ask these kind of accountability questions to a colleague and have them ask these questions to you? Uh, it affects me so much positively. Uh -huh. And I asked one of my colleagues, I called actually Pastor Rickson Marquez, and he did a covenant with the Lord after the spiritual alarm clock wakes him up. Amen. 
And did he ask you these questions too, Pastor? He did not ask me. <laughs> he did not ask you. Ah, okay. So, um, students, thank you for sharing. Students, uh, I want to bring the microphone to you. How does it affect you as a student to have a colleague of yours, to have a fellow classmate, ask you about these deep spiritual questions? About are you actually doing them in your life? Okay? Right here. Would you speak to that? Okay. Okay. Oh, not, no, okay. Who would, who would be willing to speak to that? How does it affect you? Does it have any positive uh, blessing to you or is it a waste of time? I'm asking you to share, yes. How does it affect you to share these questions? Okay, we're going right to Brent. So for me, uh, there's actually a big difference that impacts my life. Because before, uh, your time is really, you know, you feel like so tiring. You feel like as if you want to sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep. But because of this challenge, it changed my life really big. Because instead of being in a laziness state, it made me into a worker of Christ. So he wakes me up morning by morning and he tells me to go to this book, to read this book and to learn more about his words. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, yes? Okay. Let's go right to our brother here. How does it affect you to ask these questions and be asked by someone else these personal spiritual questions? Well, uh, for me, um, this is some kind of a great challenge. All along, I've been thinking that uh, I know how to speak with young people because I'm a family man. Uh, I used to be the one always talking to the family since I'm the father. But now when this challenge came to me and in my heart, uh, now it seems that I do not know how to speak then with you know, young people. That's why even here I, I'm just uh, satisfied, you know, hearing with your voices, the voices of the young people. And it seems that that's, for me, is, is uh, the challenge is coming, going back to me. And now I began to understand that there is that a great challenge to first uh, to relate with uh, different kinds of people, especially the young people. Yes. Yes. Does it encourage you in your walk with Jesus to have your brother ask you, did you remember to let God wake you up? Did you remember first thing to, to surrender to Jesus as Lord? Does it have any a positive strengthening to your walk with Jesus to be asked those questions? Yes, to my surprise, in fact, we were complimenting each other because um, we are both having the same concerns. And, you know, uh, when you are all alone and, and thinking alone without someone to share with, and then when suddenly there's that someone sharing with you and you compliment with each other and now with, with this, now it uh, it's helps me and and we are actually laughing with one another and sharing Amen. the joy. Amen. This is what this had brought to us. Thank you for sharing. Very good. Now, back to online. I want to share something. And those of you students, you might be interested in this story. You can apply this story to your context of small groups, uh, the choir you're with, the Sabbath school you're leading, all those kinds of things. In one church where I was pastoring, I was thinking about these simple things of how to live as a disciple. And I thought, hmm, I'm curious. I wonder how many of my elders are actually men of the word. I wonder how many of my elders are actually in the word of God every day, looking for Jesus, you know, fresh picture of Jesus, and actually applying it to their lives. Well, I don't know about the context in the Philippines, but this story comes from the United States and where I was pastoring. And I will tell you, in the United States, like we were mentioning yesterday, 
they're not expecting that I'm going to ask them such questions. Uh, in fact, many churches have low expectations for elders. And too low, I believe. And so, and that's many times around the world. We do not have high enough expectations about who an elder can be in Jesus with, with some coaching and training. So I went up to my elders and I said, I'm going to give you a piece of paper. And I said, uh, I'm just going to ask you a yes or no question, like I did with you, you know, the other day with your heads down. I said, yes or no, do you have meaningful time alone with God in the Word every day? Yes or no? I had, uh, I had 16 elders in this church. It's a big church, okay? And um, my passion as a pastor is to be an equipping pastor, so I really had worked with them to equip them to preach the word, to teach the word. I equipped them to do hospital visitation, how to do uh, anointing with oil according to uh, Spirit of Prophecy and also in James 5. And, but I had not asked them this question before and I was convicted I needed to ask. I got the results back and out of 16 of my elders, uh, there were many that did not have that daily time. I told them, I said, you know, uh, as a pastor, I have had times in my life where I had daily time with Jesus, but maybe it wasn't meaningful. It was just a routine, and it was too rushed. It's very, I said, so I'm not asking you in a critical way. I'm asking because I care about you. I said, how many of you would like to become men of the word? All 16 hands went up. I said, praise the Lord. I said, you know, if you'll be men of the word, uh, then you can help your, the congregation, our congregation, become men and women and children and youth of the word. Amen? Amen, pastors? So, uh, they were a little nervous, and I said, look, I'm going to teach you a few things. So, on that night for the elders meeting, I did a training, and I did something uh, similar to some of these principles right here. I taught them about John 5.39, knowing uh, the Jesus of Scripture, about how to have Christ-centered uh, teaching and who Jesus is. And then this one, doesn't have a note beside it, but that we must implement it in our life. We must practice it. <clears throat> I said, so, I said, my friends, I said, choose a prayer partner on the elder team that you're comfortable with. I said, in two weeks from now, we'll have part two. We will ask each other, how did it go? They came back in two weeks, and I asked them, how did it go? And some of them forgot, of course. Some of them weren't expecting that I was actually going to follow through. Uh, but some of them did remember. Now picture this, elders, I put them in twos, and they're, they're sitting right across from each other just like this, you know. And they're asking each other these questions, pastors. They're asking, did you spend time with Jesus every day in his word since Pastor Don just taught us this last week or two weeks ago? And are you implementing it? And I, the, the feeling in the room was so awkward. It was so uncomfortable. Because again, my friends, we have not made this the culture of church. We teach new things, but we don't follow through and so I told them, I said, it's okay to be awkward. If it's uncomfortable, the Spirit of God is stirring our hearts, pastors. The Spirit of God is stirring us that something's wrong, something's out of place, something needs attention. And so it took uh, quite a number of times, but over the next few months, I noticed that more and more elders were talking with much more excitement with each other. Instead of like this, and like defensively, you know, they were sharing, they were leaning towards each other, they were sharing what did they find out about Jesus since the last two week ago meeting. A change started happening on my elder team. As, the, as my elders got into the word, they became more fearless for God. As my elders got into the word, they became uh, elders with a heart for the congregation. The elders ended up being over little flocks in the church. I know we all have different ways of organizing our elders around the world, but they, they became like disciple makers over flocks. And slowly, they started getting comfortable with sitting down with members and not just telling them like this, you should be in the Bible every day. 
That's easy to do. Anybody can say, you should, right? But the elders became comfortable to have these personal conversations like this with other men in the congregation. And they would teach also women to do this with the women. They got comfortable saying, you know what? Even though I'm an elder in the church, I have not always been in the Word, sometimes they would say. And they would talk to the members and say, so don't be embarrassed if you're not in the Word. I'm on a journey with Jesus in the Word. Can I teach you how to be in the Word? You see what I'm saying? It's a different feeling than just the elder going up and saying, you should. And it touched the hearts of our members, and more and more people started being men and women in the Word. Does this make sense, everybody? Pastors? This is a precious thing to do. I urge the pastors to seriously pray about how can you teach these first three principles. Remember number one? Remember what number one is? To teach these principles to your elders and let the elders teach them to who? Teach them to the congregation. I'm going to erase this right here. And, oh, before I do, I need to ask, pastors, do you have any questions on these four quadrants when you're sharing truth. And uh, students, be ready, because I'm going to give you a moment, too. If you have a practical question about how to do a Bible study or a sermon uh, from the pulpit or a teaching moment of the Word, I'm going to online first. So I'm following through with our teaching yesterday. Uh, you see, pastors, even, even for me always, I fight my urge to give you new information because this is my culture all the way through uh, our schooling system. I have to always remember, slow down and make sure that what is taught the day before is caught. So what questions do you have, my pastor friends, about the interactive way that I presented yesterday? If I don't know the answer, I'll be honest with you and tell you I just don't know. Who has a question? I'm looking on the screen. If you have a question, please uh, just wave. And so I know. If you don't have questions, oh, we have one right here. Uh, how, is this? how do you say it? Dave. Okay, go ahead, brother. I have a question about the number four, the what if. Yes. What if. Uh, how to, um, can you explain more about the what if? Yes, okay. How many of you students would like to know more about the what if? Okay, so let's say that you are doing a small group, okay? Let's say you're doing a small group and you've, you've connected with them, you've led them to explore the word, you've practiced it, now you're coming to the conclusion time. Now I'm going to give you the traditional style first, and then let's go to this. Traditional style would be, at the end of a small group, you tell your team, you tell them how to personally apply. You follow me? You spell it out. It's more like you're spoon feeding to them. You're saying, and this is what you should do. Okay? Now, if you want to activate their minds or the Holy Spirit to activate their minds, it's okay for you to give the challenge, but you impress the people in your group. Here's the challenge. What, what if you actually did this challenge? What does it look like for you? In other words, own it. Contextualize it. Um, my brother here is, is here in the dormitory, right? You're in the dormitory? Pardon me? Apartment. So my brother over here, if we can take the, the camera over here. Uh, here's a student in, a, in an apartment. So uh, I don't, do you have a roommate or not? So with his, but no family yet, right? So in his context, he might do this study and it's going to look, my point is it's going to look a certain way. Uh, there may be a girl here uh, that has, how many do you have in one room in the dormitory? Six. Six. So if you're teaching something one-on-one -on -one with your buddy or you're teaching the girls, let's say you have six in your dormitory, it's going to be different how you're going to see the challenge happen. The point is this. Pastors, 
You know, pastors, we're not all the same. Students, you're not all the same. So when you come to this last part, you're bringing it to a crescendo if you're thinking about music. It's the high point in the lesson. And you can give a challenge to wrestle with, but it'd be awesome if you say, now what is God calling you to do with this challenge? So I'm giving you a way to do this. You can say, what is God calling you to do with this challenge? In other words, you're, you're wanting them to not just hear from you exactly how to do it. You want them to wrestle with God how to do it. Is this being helpful, brother? Okay, good. Um, pastors, are you interested in, and students too, are you interested in knowing some ways to do quadrant four with children? Children in your congregation, children you might be reaching out to students on a mission trip or something, or a vacation Bible school. Did any of you like working with kids? Anybody? Pastors, any of you like working with kids? Okay, so here's a fun way. Here's a fun way to do it. Um, here's, I'll make a point. So I'm going to erase this and uh, take out a blank sheet of paper, everybody. Please. Take out a blank sheet of paper. Our secretary did such a good job yesterday, I hate to erase us. Okay, if you're working with children. Okay, you can do this on there. And then uh, so I can ask a few examples to come up to the board. And pastors, if you have a piece of paper, you can try this out there. Let's imagine that we're doing vacation Bible school at your church. Or children's Sabbath school at your church, youth Sabbath school. Or those of you who are here working with some one of the churches here locally, right? With your young people's group. So let's say that you're doing, doing a study, and uh, I'll use an example I talked about. Um, no, I'll do a different one. Let's say that we tell the story and teach the story about uh, Philip and the Ethiopian. Okay, are we together? Are we together? The Ethiopian story with, with Philip. So we teach the story. That's quadrant two, right? And then... We say, you know, the point of this story, one of the main points of this story is that when, we, when the Spirit of God tells us to, to go somewhere, we go immediately. Immediately. And when we go, as you'll find in this story, we tell them about Jesus. If you look at the story later, you don't have to look now, but Philip preached Jesus to them. Amen? He didn't preach Philip to them. You know what I'm saying? He preached Jesus to them. And so, uh, you could get to, after you do that, you could actually say, right here, now I'm going to do a quadrant three on this, okay? So, online, if you have family, friends there, try what I'm about to say on each other if you can. Local right here in two. So, are you ready, everybody? So, let's just say, I just taught that story. You have to be a kid at heart right now, everybody. Okay? And so... Uh, pastors, turn to somebody. Students, turn to somebody. Just one other person. And say, just like Philip the evangelist went to the Ethiopian in the desert and preached Jesus, now I give you a moment in this room. Turn to someone next to you and say, here's one thing I want to tell you about Jesus that I have learned in my life so far. One thing I've learned about Jesus that I want to pass on to you. Just try that right now. Pastors, please, someone uh, in your home, just uh, tell them, there's one thing I've learned about Jesus I want to share with you. Those of you who are just coming, uh, please, if you're going to be a part, come in and uh, be, 
be in here somewhere? We already have chairs over here too. And we actually need some up here. Okay, thank you. I'm going to give you just one more minute. You should be, those of you just coming in, you're asking, you're saying to, to each other, here's one thing I've learned about Jesus I want to pass on to you. You should be doing this in twos, students, just in twos. It's in twos. Okay, pastors. Okay, I'm coming right to you. Pastors, what's one thing? Oh, the microphone went. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. What's one thing that you know about, you've learned about Jesus that you just passed on to somebody in your home right now this morning? It's one simple thing about Jesus that you've learned so far in your life, I'm saying, in your lifetime. Okay. If you can call him, uh, Pastor Kenneth, call him by name, please. Right here. Chester. Chester. Are you raising your hand? Go ahead, Chester. Okay. You're online, Chester. Okay. I have shared that I have uh, learned that God is my like provider. Right? Say it a little bit louder, please. I have shared to my family that God is our provider. Amen. Hey. Two kilos of rice. Ah, very nice. Very good. Thank you. Pastors, give me another one. What's one thing you've learned about Jesus so far in your whole lifetime? Just one simple thing. Okay? Lee, Lee. Pastor Lee, please. Pastor Lee, go ahead. You're online. Hello, yes. Good morning, Pastor. Okay, hold on one second. Students, if I can have your attention, please, now. Students, we have a testimony right now. Pastor, what if, what's one th simple thing you've learned about Jesus you just passed on to somebody in your home? Yes, um, the thing that I know about and learn about Jesus is uh, only one I, 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 I really appreciate, that Jesus never changed. Amen. Never change. Amen. That makes me think of Hebrews 13. Right? Yes. He is the same yesterday, today. Amen. Now, pastors, are you ready to do an activity for uh, Quadrant 4? You ready? Students, you ready? So let's just imagine, so we've taught the story. We've done this little exercise, okay? And then we want them to own what's going to happen next, right? We want them to own it before these children go out of the class. So I'm going to do this with you right now, but I'm going to ask for two volunteers to come up here and do it live, and the rest of you can do it on your piece of paper. Pastors, please do this on your piece of paper, what I'm about to do, okay? So I need two students, and I'm going to draw this in half, and uh, so that they can see, you're going to have to draw on the side, okay, if you don't mind. Who wants red and who wants black? Okay. Now, pastors, are you ready? Do you have a piece of paper? Okay. Students, you ready? So remember, you're a child. Okay, you're there. You're a child. And you've already had this story. You've already shared what Jesus means to you. Now, draw. I want you, I invite you, in Jesus' name, I invite you to, to get on your knees and pray and say, Jesus, who of my friends... Who of my friends or family? You don't need to write this down unless if you want. Well, you can write it for your notes, but on the piece of paper, it's just going to be a picture. Who, you're going to say, Jesus, who of my family and friends 
does not know you in a, in a, in a, as, a, as a friend. He's saying, Jesus, who of my family and friends do not know Jesus as their friend? And after you pray, then draw a quick picture of that friend and put their first name beside it if you're old enough to write. Remember, I'm doing this as if you're little kids, okay? Okay? You got it? So, uh, pastors, I'm inviting you to do this too. This is actually a great thing for young and old, is let's get on our knees and let's ask Jesus Christ, who of our family and friends does not have Jesus as a friend yet? And then just draw a quick picture and put their first name beside it. Okay, just short prayers. Amen. I invite you online and right here, just draw a quick picture of someone that the Holy Spirit's bringing to your mind. Okay? Someone that doesn't have Jesus as your friend. I'm just asking for one in particular. You can do more than one, but you don't. Just, just like one or two. Yeah, and, just, and then put your name in it. The name of the person. You can do one for family, one for friends. If you like pastors, no problem. One in your extended family, one in your friendship circle that does not know Jesus as friend. Just draw a picture and put a label. Okay. Are you ready for the next part? Pastors, you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Next part. Everybody? Next part. Now remember, you're thinking like you're, you're a kid, okay? So I'm doing this kid style. So uh, kids, Jesus knows, Jesus knows, like I'm, I'm going to, uh, imagine you're all kids, okay? So kids, look, look what my friend dad's just put here. He has a little friend named Rex, okay? I think I know that friend. So, he has a friend named Rex. Jesus knows, Jesus knows what's going on in Rex's heart, but Dad doesn't know, right? Right, kids? He doesn't know. So, here's what to do next. Of all the things you know about Jesus, I want you to draw a picture beside the person of what does Rex, and you know, put your own name in, What does your friend or what does your family member most need to know about Jesus that they don't know? I'll give you an example, okay? Can I do a fun example with you real quick? Okay, let me do one. I'm gonna gonna make one up just to make a point. So I'm gonna stand right over here, okay? Sorry. So you can race it later. So, okay. So here is a friend and we're gonna say that her name is Sue, okay? And I'm going to draw a picture of something that I don't think she knows about Jesus, that Jesus really wants Sue to know. Sue has a heart that is broken, okay? It's broken in two. She's a really sad friend of mine, and she's hurting because of something that's happening with her mommy and daddy right now, okay? that shouldn't happen in the home. And so I want to tell Sue that Jesus is the one that fixes her broken heart. You see what I'm doing with this? I'm just taking quadrant four 
And I'm thinking about how does this look in my life to be like uh, Philip going out to see the Ethiopian. Pastors, I'm inviting you to do this simple, simple thing. It is beside the, the picture you drew and the name, I want you to prayerfully think and say, God, out of all the things I know as a pastor that I could share with this friend of mine or family member, all the things I know about Jesus that I've preached and taught for years, what does this person most need to know about Jesus Christ? And draw, don't write it, draw a picture of what they need. Do they need to know the power of God? You, know, you could draw that. You know, uh, do they need to know the peace of God? Whatever it is. Uh, just draw that real quick. Students, see what you can do. This is just solo right now, okay? Just one-on-one. -on -one. Beside your picture, prayerfully draw what they most need to know about Jesus. Okay, I'm going online, and pastors, I would like to see some examples of what you have. If you can put your picture up, if you're willing to, uh, just tell us really quickly about uh, who God brought to your heart, and, and show us the picture that uh, illustrates what they most need to know about Jesus Christ. Who would be willing to do that? Just raise a hand. Okay, we have one coming right here, and it is Pastor Alfredo. Okay, students, let's look alive here. Let's see what Pastor Alfredo can teach us just from his own example. Can you, can you hold it up and tell us about who you thought of? So let's, let us see your picture. Can we, can we uh, expand that picture or not? Or is it too hard? Hold on one second, Pastor Alfredo. We're going to see if we can expand it so we can see your picture better. One moment. If there's not a way, we'll, I'll, we'll just come up there. Oh, that's getting better. I wish everybody else could see that. Wow. Okay. So, Pastor Alfredo, what, um, who did you think of? Ah, right, here you are. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. What do you say, students? Yay. Okay, yeah. Pastor Alfredo. I drew their uh, two pictures, actually. I drew a because I, have I need you to be down. Okay. Uh, you can sit in chairs. Okay, go ahead. They had to help her. Yeah. I have playmates in tennis that uh, they don't know about Jesus. Uh huh. And uh, the pictures of my father and my only brother, they're not in faith yet. And I, I label it there that. Uh, uh, they maybe they don't know that the Lord forgive, uh -huh. forgives, and the Lord is patient and long suffering, because at times they they thought that they are so sinful that the Lord will not forgive them anymore. Okay, can we see your picture? Picture? Yeah, I, I want to see how you drew those pictures. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. My father is taller than my brother. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Hey, good. Give him a hand. Good, Pastor. Amen. So you, what you most want to share with them is, say it one more time, the, the thing you most want to tell them about Jesus. Yeah, to my father, uh, I want to, I really want to tell him that the Lord really forgives. And my brother who have backslidden, I want to tell him that the Lord is long-suffering and uh, is waiting for him to be back. Amen. Amen. So right now, I invite you to do something. Um, students, I want to have, well, this, first of all, let's see our, our friends up here. What do you have? Tell us just real quickly. That's what, that's what we'll be doing. That'll be the easiest way. Uh, tell us who do you have here. Just one example. And what do they most need to know about Jesus? And talk this way. So you have to talk this way, okay? 
Uh, we're having a microphone coming. So make sure you're always pointing out that way. Just one. Mm -hmm. Tell us just one example of somebody that God put in your heart that needs to have Jesus as a friend. Um, for me, it's my older brother. His name is Seth. Okay. Um, to know God's love and to know that he, uh, God can break chains. Amen. Yeah. Whatever. Praise whatever. God. Thank you very much. And I want to know on the other side, dads, what about you? I think this one. This is my sister. Okay. And what does she most need to know about Jesus? Uh, because right now she's worried and she's confused about her situation. She is sick. And uh, so I just want, I, I, I want her to know that Jesus heals. Yes. Jesus restores and Jesus saves. Amen. Amen. Now, pastors, if you have a family there with you, try something with me. And uh, students, we're going to do this real quick right where we are. So uh, students, please make a circle with your group. Because we are doing the social distancing, uh, watch closely how I'm going to teach you to do it, okay? So uh, local audience, stand up. And online, if you have family members there, you can actually do the same thing. Or if you have one more pastor with you. But uh, let's just stand where we are. Let's stand. So uh, let's take the camera uh, right to this group right here, if we can. And if you can step up here so we can see you better. And just leave your things behind, okay? Okay, what I'm about to do with this group, I'm inviting online and all of you to do where you are, okay? So in, come right up here so we can, they can see you easier. So you're going to make a circle. Make a circle. And you're not joining hands because <laughs> we're trying to be so careful. And we're turn you're going to need your hands free. All of you need your hands free. Okay. And you're going to turn to the right in your circle. So all of you are doing this. And those online, if you have a family there, you're in your circle, you turn to the right. Turn to the right. So you're going like this all the way around. Like if I'm in a circle, I'm like here. Okay. Yeah, like this. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do, everybody. Okay, on the camera, are we ready? Okay, in your circles, in your circles, let's keep our hands off of each other because of the social distancing. So normally I'd put my hands on the person's shoulder, but for now I'm just putting it above it, just like this. And let's do that all the way around. So step in close enough, and you're not touching the person, you're just putting your hands above their shoulders. Now. This is a way you could end a quadrant four time teaching them to share Jesus with their friends like, or their or, friends and, and, and even strangers, like Philip the Evangelist. So let's bow our heads, okay, and just notice what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to let you do it online just for a moment if you have family members you're doing this with or a friend. And right here you're going to do it just a one line prayer of blessing over the person to your right. I'm going to give an example before you do it. So just listen close. And then when I say amen, then you pray for God to bless someone in your group online or here on how they're going to share Jesus with someone. So this is the way I'm going to do it. Help me with your name again. It's Albert. Albert. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Uh, dear Father in heaven, I'm laying my hands here above the shoulders of Albert because... There are pictures he's drawn, drawn on his piece of paper of somebody in his friends, somebody in his family who does not yet know Jesus as his friend. And he drew a picture beside that of something that they don't know about Jesus. So I'm simply saying, God, pour out your spirit on Albert so that he can share Jesus in a meaningful way with one of his friends or family members in the way that they most need to know about Jesus. In Jesus' name, I'm praying for Albert that he'll do this in these next seven days before this group meets again at our church here. Amen. Amen. Online and here, please continue that. Just a short, short prayer uh, for, for the person to your right in your circle, praying that they'll actually share Jesus with one of their friends or family members in a meaningful way. I'll give you just a moment.
We're going to take just one more minute, please, in our prayers. Okay, I'm going to do a, oh, some are still praying, that's okay. Let's have a, a soft song just for a moment, just one short chorus, very short chorus, if someone lead us. And take a microphone when you're singing it, take a microphone please. You shall love, let's sing. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your heart. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. You shall love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your soul. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Amen. Okay, just doing a quick review, online pastors, as well as everyone here, for your notes. These are the three principles we focused on so far of how to live daily as a disciple of Jesus. Check them out. Okay, if we can go and zero right in on the screen on the, here, let's just review real quick. Uh, seven, so seven principles of living daily as a disciple of Jesus. Seven principles of living daily as a disciple of Jesus. First day we were here, we talked about covenant, covenant, have a covenant with God each night to awaken you the next morning for unrushed time with him in his word and in prayer. Some people around the world, they say, is the main point uh, how early he wakes you up? No, it's not. I urge you again, you don't even need to tell other people how early you wake up. The main point is having unrushed time with God that he's in charge of so that you're not rushed in and out of the word of God, rushed in and out of your prayer time. So that's number one. Number two is to surrender to Jesus as Lord first thing each morning. 
If you are finding yourself in danger, pastors, as I do sometimes, where I say surrender so much it doesn't even mean anything after a while, then think about the exercise we did yesterday with the crown. Like really be honest, not just pastors, but students, we need to be honest, right? About what's really under the Lordship of Christ and what isn't. If you need something to jog your memory when you're doing principle two in your life, there's, um, there's a couple of words that you can use to help you remember what to surrender or phrases. I like to say, I'm gonna, it's maybe too tiny for you to see, I don't know, but one is all I what? Am. Number two, all I what? Have. That's my time. That's my talent. That's my treasure. That's my agenda, right? And then there's another one. This is probably the toughest one. All my attitude. Can you see those, Pastor? Can we zero in on that? Okay. So all I am, all I have, all my attitude. Do you know that uh, our pastor's families would change if we as pastors would surrender our attitude to Jesus before we even talk to a family member? Students, your relationships with your roommates would change if the first thing you did in the morning was surrender to Jesus, your attitude, before you talk to someone in your room. What do you say, students? What do you say, pastors? You agree? Okay, now the third one that we explored yesterday with active learning is discover who Jesus in is, is, in, is in his word daily and practice today what you learned about Jesus. Practice today what you learned about Jesus. In other words, put foot or feet on the truth. Feet on the truth. Okay, can I erase this now? Pastors, if you've got this, uh, oh, don't race. Okay, okay. They say slow down. Okay, slow down. So you can take a picture of it. You can come and get it, whatever you want to do. You can come and take a picture, but don't cover the area so the pastors can still see where they're taking notes. So don't stand in front of it. Pastors, are you, are you good? Did you get it? Thumbs up if you're good. Uh, my helper there in the white shirt, can you tell me if all their thumbs are up? What's his, what's his name? Hmm? Oh, you had your back to me. I couldn't see who you were. Pastor Kenneth, are they all saying they're good? Okay. Students, are you, are you good? Okay. Do you, pastors, do you have energy for the fourth principle before I leave? Do you have energy for one more or are you too tired? If you have energy, put your thumbs up if you can, if you can handle to learn one more principle of living as a disciple of Jesus. Thumbs up if you're okay. I'm looking real quick. Are we okay? Okay. Hey, good. Students, are you okay? Okay. Would you like me to teach you number four, not as a lecture, but like we did yesterday with the four quadrants? You want me to teach you that way? Students, do you want me to, uh, pardon me, pastors, do you want me to present this with all four quadrants with the activity? Or do you prefer just lecture? If you prefer a lecture, then go like this. If you prefer action, then go like this. <laughs> okay. And students, if you prefer lecture, go like this. If you prefer active learning, go like this. Okay, very good. So, <clears throat> number four. Number four. Now remember, when you're presenting, pastors, students, when you're presenting a new truth and you want it to be active learning, I rarely will tell them what the truth is 
as my first thing I do. Because if I do, it destroys the curiosity. Right? Right? Yes. So I want you to be curious right now. Are you curious? I want you to be even guessing in your mind what could be the fourth principle of living as a disciple of Jesus. Are you a little curious? So I want to do an activity right now that ideally, like quadrant one, remember quadrant one, should be something that activates everybody. It's not a passive activity. Some uh, pastors and teachers and students, when they first learn quadrant one for doing Bible studies, they're saying, can I do a, a demonstration? Demonstrations are good. I'm about to do one in a, a few minutes. But demonstrations still make you passive. Am I right? Like you're watching. If a demonstration involves the audience in some way, good. If it doesn't, then you're just back to what? Watching you lead a small group or watching pastors uh, speak to us from way up there in the pulpit. So I'm thinking right now of number four principle. And I'm thinking, how can I help you? How can I help you do an activity that gets you thinking about where the Word of God is about to take us, but I can't use the Word. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to make it uh, a spiritual activity because quadrant one activity should take you where you are, this is humans, and be a bridge to what book? Quadrant one activity should take you from where you are to where? Right into the truth of God in quadrant two. Pastors, are you with me on what I just said? Are you with me? Okay, so the activity that you do is not overtly spiritual in itself. It's a simple, practical exercise type of thing that everybody can relate to in the audience, but preps the heart. If you're praying as a pastor, as you're praying as a student, uh, as you do it, it preps the heart to be ready for the Word of God. Hmm. And I was thinking and praying about this one this morning as soon as I knew that we'd have a chance to do another one. So I need everybody to jump up to your feet. Jump up to your feet. Pastors online, if you have a family member, you can do this with some friend or family member in your home. Okay? Everybody on your feet. Pastors too. Let's get on our feet. Now, I'm asking, I'm going to say this two times. I'm wanting you, my audience, to think of something that you have seen in your life that makes you think of new life. Something in your, the, in your experience that makes you think of new life. Once you, once you have a, an idea of something that you have seen, you've experienced in your life that really illustrates what new life means, then you've got to act it out to your prayer partner and see if they can guess what that is. What is it from? It can be from nature. Are you following me? It can be something from nature, from animal world, from the skies, whatever. Something in our world that when you see it, you think, oh, whoa, there's new life right there. You got it? Are you good, pastors? Are you good? Okay, I'm seeing thumbs up. Good. I'll give you just a moment. Go. Go, go, go. Quick, quick, quick. In twos with your prayer partner. They have to guess what it is. They have to guess.
Okay, pastors, just in a moment, I'm coming to you, and I'm going to actually have uh, one or two of you act one out and see if the students can guess. So which two of you pastors would be willing to do that for the students to guess? Something that represents new life, new life from the world around you. So Pastor Kenneth is helping me watch. And raise your, your thumbs up if you're willing to, to act out something that represents new life. The students will guess you. <laughs> Pastors, are, are none of you going to help me? Oh, here we go. Good, good, good. We have Pastor Art. Okay. <laughs> students, have a seat, please. Students, have a seat, please. Shh. On the screen, as soon as I can have your attention. Pastor Art, if you're talking right now, it's, uh, we can only have one. Okay. Shh. Shh. Pastor Art is getting ready. Wow, I like your bridge. Where are you anyway? That's amazing. You look like you're in California to me. Okay. Oh, he's showing us right now. Look, look, look. Look, what's he doing? What's he doing? Hey, whoa. He's baptizing him right under the bridge, the Golden Great Bridge. Wow, wow. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good job, Pastor. Good job, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> they guessed. What is it? Baptism. Thank you so much, Pastor. Give me... I want to see if we have another pastor that can do a demonstration, or I should say, a, a act out something that represents new life. New life. Raise your hand if you're willing. And students, I want one from this side and one from this side. Okay. Uh, dads, can you recruit real quick? One from this side that will do an act and one from this side. Okay. Who else? One more pastor real quick. One more pastor. Come quick, don't be afraid. This will be good. The first one was very good. Okay, what's your name? Jade. Jade? Mom Jade. Jade. Okay, you're on. Okay, shh. Okay, we have a fearless woman of God here. Look, look, look. Okay, you're on. Okay, shh. New heart. Is it a new heart? A new heart for Jesus? Yeah, what, what, what? Text in the Bible, can you find that one? Ooh, she's saying, where do you find the, the text in the Bible where it says, I give you a new heart? They said Ezekiel 36, mom. Yeah, that's right. Excellent. Very good. Did they pass? Did they pass your test? Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, pastors, now we're going to see what the students can do. Okay, who's my contestant? No, you don't, they don't need a microphone because they're acting out. They're acting. So, do you need a microphone or not? Okay, come right here. Okay, give her a hand so she's not scared. And don't worry, it's just all the pastors of the mission. It's okay. It's all right. Okay, go ahead. Ah, a tree. Is it any tree? Is it any tree or the tree? Any tree. Very good. Okay, now only one thing though. This next one, you can't guess. It has to be pastors that guess the next one. Okay, so shh. Local audience, do not say out loud, okay? Okay, pastors, let's zero in right here on this very tall lady. And I want you to see what are you going to do to help us know or uh, uh, represent new life. You know, remember, you're, you're not guessing. We're, we're letting the pastors guess. So pastors, what is, what is she demonstrating? If you know, raise your hand. Pastors, what do you say? Raise your hand. What do you think she's representing for new life? Okay, go ahead. Pastor Jesse. Pastor Jesse. Hello. 
Pastor Jesse, you're on. No. Yes. Okay. Yes. What's your guess? What no. do you think? What, what do you think yeah. she's demonstrating? Can you hear me, Pastor? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, God is in the family or in the home? God is in the family or in the home. It's a good guess, Pastor, but you're wrong. Sorry. So any other pastor? Good guess, though, Pastor. Okay, do it one more time. Can you think of it any other way to do it? Hmm. Okay. Something. Uh, and what pastor do we have? Okay, I pastor see your Denia, hand. Yeah, Ernesto Denia. Pastor Ernesto. Okay, uh, shh, everybody. Shh. Pastor Ernesto, Hello? what's your guess? What is she doing? Hello. Okay, go ahead, Pastor. The, bl the blood of Jesus Christ cover him. Cover him. Cover him. Cover him. Uh, I'm not hearing well. The blood of Jesus Christ cover her. The blood of Jesus covering? The blood of Jesus covering you? No, Pastor, but good guess. But you're wrong. Er, sorry. Okay, I have another pastor right here. What's his name? Pastor Wilfred. What's your guess? What do you think she's depicting? Go ahead, you're on. Students, you, please, please. New heaven and new earth. I'm sorry? Heaven and new heaven, and, heaven new and new earth. Whoa, he got it. Give him a hand. Good job. I'll give you a virtual hand slap. Okay. Okay. Very good. Now, now, my friends, the pastors just showed you examples of things to get you thinking about new life. You students, I had much fun watching what you were acting out. Some of you are acting out this or this, or all kinds of things can represent new life. But right now we're going into a topic, a topic that actually is the instigator of new life. We're going into a topic, if you're talking right now, we're distracting each other. We're going into a topic right now that if we will not just receive only intellectually, but actually receive in our heart and into our practice, this fourth principle we're about to discover is a, a life changer, not just a once for all, but a day by day life changer to give us new life. Pastors and students, how many of you honestly are thirsty in your heart on this morning to have more life in Jesus than you have now? More, more life, fresh life with Christ. Is that what you want? So I invite us to, to pause and join me on your knees just for a moment, both online and here. This is my last topic to do with you before I, I leave today. Unless if God uh, keeps changing my plane. So we'll see. So let's pray. Let's pray. Dear God in heaven, I need your help so much. The devil would like very much for the pastors online and the students right here to be very distracted as I share this simple truth about how to have the new life that you offer us every single day of our life. And so I'm asking in Jesus' name that you would open my heart up again to the Word of God and open up the hearts of the pastors, the hearts of the students, and the faculty to know this truth, this fourth principle of how to...
Hello, Pak Ringo Rindi.
for being the light and for bringing the light and the generator back on just in time for uh, to go right to the written word of God. And please protect the technology even more. Protect us, protect the pastors, and open our hearts up to the word right now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, there you are, pastors. Praise the Lord. Okay, please take out a sheet of paper for quadrants. I mean, uh, for fourth principle. Fourth principle. I was just saying... The fourth principle is about how to have the new life in Jesus every single day of your life. Okay? And here's what it is. I'm going to put it right in here. And then we're going to go to a study. So remember, this is the what? What's the, what's the question? Why? Okay? And this is what? This is where we do the Bible study, right? This is the how. And this is what if. Okay. This right here is the focal point of our last study together. Okay. Unless if again my plane gets canceled. Or some other thing tries to stop me from going to my plane. So we'll see. So right here, this is what we have. The fourth principle. So number four. Fourth principle is... Ask and receive the daily. You know, everything's daily on this, basically. You know, you know to live as a disciple of Jesus, it's not a one-time shot. It's, it's all the time. Daily, ask and receive the daily baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sorry, I ran out of room, but you can hopefully read it. Can you read that, pastors? Okay, sorry for... Oh, did we lose you, pastors? You know, we're going to have to really pray on this, on this last one. That's very interesting. Just really keep praying. Amen. pastors are no longer with us. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Now, everybody, uh, we're going to go forward by faith. What we're about to do in this last little bit of minutes, they're going to record anyway the glory of God. And they'll make that available to the pastors and you can have this for you, okay? So take good notes. What we're about to do is in this simple way. Remember the activity we just did? You act out what? You act out. You act out new life in twos, right? Can you read my writing okay? Is that all right? Okay. And partner guesses. Partner guesses. And then, then we prayed, right? And now we're ready for the Word of God. Let's go right now to the Word of God. Let's go, let's go in particular to the Gospel of Luke. Uh, chapter 3. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3. 
I need uh, someone to grab the mic. Uh, if one of you can be a volunteer, let's give dads a chance to, to breathe. Okay, it's okay. Dads, you can take a break. Uh, can someone take the microphone? And I need someone to read verses 17, 16 and 17, please. Okay, if you can take the microphone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember you, you're facing the camera. So everybody, whenever you do something uh, for participation, face this way. Go ahead, brother. Are we there? Are we there? Okay. Luke chapter 3, verse 16 to 17 says, John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come the tongues of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His, his win, with knowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'm now going to give you just about a minute or two. It'll be very short. And... Look at this with your prayer partner and ask each other, what does this tell you about the Holy Spirit? Like, what's the prophecy actually saying about the Holy Spirit? See what you can find. I'll give you just a moment. Okay, because of time, I have to keep going. Okay, everybody? Sorry. If I can have your attention, please. Would someone go to the microphone and tell us what is John the Baptist actually prophesying about the Messiah, but also about the Holy Spirit? What's he prophesying? So if someone can go to the mic and just answer that question, please. And just face to the camera. Students, we only have a few minutes left, so if there's anyone that would speak to that, that would be wonderful. I just, I took a look at verse 16, and we have heard that already so many, um, so many times, and that John baptized with water, but Christ, which is described as mightier than he, will baptize with the Holy Spirit. But when you see verse 17, it describes what the Holy Spirit will do. And, and in the King James Version, it says, To purge its floor, will gather the wheat into the garner, and the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. But I see how the Holy Spirit's work here is the Holy Spirit will never stop working until God, bit by bit, little by little, will take away all the things that are hindering you from Him. Amen. Thank you very, very much. So here, John the Baptist prophesies that the Messiah to come will baptize you with two things. What is it? Oh, be careful. He says, John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water. But the one to come, the Messiah, he's going to baptize you with water? Is that what he said? Holy Spirit and fire. So this is the first point here. Is what are we talking about? Well, first of all, number one, uh, Jesus, Jesus will baptize 
you with what again? Holy Spirit and fire. Now, some say, what's the fire? There's uh, different levels of, of understanding on that, but this is what my understanding is so far. You notice it says the fire will burn up the what? Look at the chaff. The chaff is like if you have wheat from a field and it's like the, all the husks and everything that you're not going to actually devour, right? So the chaff would represent spiritually all those things that are not good, that have no place in the heart of a Christian or in the mind of a Christian. We all have chaff. How about you? We all have chaff. And John the Baptist is saying the Messiah to come, he's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So he's going to do both. Now, again, the passage, let's put the passage right here. We said Luke 3, help me out. Luke 3, verse what? 16 and 17. Okay? So this is the first point. It's Jesus that does this. And he baptizes you with two things, the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, the topic that we're doing, we could easily do a whole weekend on. We could do a whole week of prayer on just the Holy Spirit. We don't have that time. We literally have minutes. Okay? I'm not trying to take a, a, a huge topic and, um, and just do a surface thing. I'm trying to go just to the main point of what, it, what this is about, being baptized with the Spirit of God. So now go with me to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. In the book of Acts, please go to Acts 1, verses 4 and 5. Can I have another student read that, please? Acts 1, verses 4 and 5. Someone, go ahead, please. Thank you. Acts 1, verses 4 and 5, it says here, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise for the promise of the Father which he said thank you Paya. you have heard from me verse 5 for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now thank you if you can hold on one second I'm going to ask you to do one more verse in just one moment so who's the one saying this in verses 4 and 5? Look close. Is it the disciple saying this? Jesus. Jesus is saying it. This is good for us to know because whereas the first uh, passage shows that John the Baptist believed in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, now we know the Messiah himself, Jesus Christ, last thing he's talking about, right? He says, I'm telling you, you will be what? Baptized with the Spirit of God. Amen? Are we agreed or not? Okay. So you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, sister, if you can also read verse 8, please. Let's look at what happens with this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, there are two major things that I am aware of. There's, there's many more, but there's two major things that happen when the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a part of a Christian's life. The first, it's not necessarily in the order, but one is, is 1 verse 8. What do you become? What do you become? What do you have in your life and what do you become? You become witnesses. And are you powerless wit witnesses? You're powerful witnesses because you are full of the Holy Spirit. So, so when you're baptized with the Spirit of God, you have Holy Spirit, I'm going to do HS, okay? Holy Spirit power to do witnessing or to be a witness? Which is it? Look close. Is there a difference? 
Remember, doing witnessing could be like this. Uh, Dad says to me, hey, uh, Pastor Don, you want to come out with me this Sabbath afternoon and we're going to go door to door and do dot, 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 you know, whatever, something door to door. It's like a specific thing. It's a witnessing activity planned. We're going to it. That's doing witnessing. But being a witness is that 24-7, when you and I are baptized by the Spirit of God, when we walk into a room, we are the witness in our dorm room. When we walk back home, or drive, fly back home, when you walk into your home after seeing, having the distance you've, you've had with your families, you are the witness for Jesus in your home as you walk there. When you're going uh, on the campus and you're in the middle of a soccer game or, you know, whatever, and you're on the field, you are the witness for Jesus Christ. It's not something you turn on and turn off. You are the witness. A baptized by the Spirit of God Christian becomes that kind of witness not uh, uh, on, off. No, you just are. You are. How many of you long to just be a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week a witness for Jesus Christ? Even though we're imperfect, but you just like to just draw people to Jesus just by the way you talk and the way you look at people and the way you interact with people. Do you want to have that happen? Amen. So another one that I believe, I believe goes with this Another result of having this baptism of the Holy Spirit, let's go to Galatians. So open your Bibles with me to Galatians. And let's go all the way to Galatians chapter 5. And could I have a volunteer read 22 and 23? Okay. Okay. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Amen. Thank you. Now this shows the inside part of being baptized by the Holy Spirit. And this shows the outside part. I should say Acts 1, 8. Okay? Let me make a note on Acts 1, 4 to 5. This is Jesus' promise. Okay? Here is the Holy Spirit power. Here is the Holy Spirit fruit. Amen? Do you know a song about the Holy Spirit's fruit? Somebody singing it? Can you lead us in that? Take, someone take a mic that they can lead it and lead us into that real quick. So we have different versions of the fruit of the spirit so i'll be seeing our versions so the fruit of the spirit ready sing the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness the fruit of the spirit is faithfulness gentleness and self-control since we live by the Spirit, we must keep in step, keep in step by the Spirit. Since we live by the Spirit, we must keep in step, keep in step by the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit changes us on the inside and then changes us on our outside and how we walk as a witness for Jesus Christ. Personally, I need all the help I can get to be changed by the Spirit of God. Do you need help? So you can't just, you don't want to just try harder and harder to be patient. Yes, we do need to make a decision to say, God, I, I 
want to be patient. I need your help to be patient. Well, the Spirit of God gives you the power to be patient. Okay? We're going to look at steps to being baptized. Here's the how. And we're going to do a very quick Bible study. And I need you to move really, really quick with this. I'm going to give you a text. Please look it up in your small groups. Read it out loud. And then tell me the step. Are you ready to go? Are you ready? Okay, John 7. John 7. And in John 7, please read the following verses, 37 to 39. 37 to 39. Read it out loud with your friends and then see if you know what that step is. Okay, again, have you read it? Okay, are we good? Okay, would someone go to the microphone and read it and just tell us what is the step? Who will go? Thank you, okay. Mm-hmm. 37 to 39. Okay, everybody. Shh. John, John 7, verse 37 and 30, to 39. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Amen. So, what is the step? First is um, come. Okay. Come to Jesus, who whoever is thirsty. So come to Him. Be thirsty. Is there one more? Believe. Believe. Believe in who? To Him. Believe, Believe in Jesus. Jesus. Right. Thank you very much. Let's say Amen to the sister. Okay. So. We need to come, we need to be thirsty, and we need to what? Believe in Jesus. Amen. Next one. Luke eleven thirteen. Please, uh, on this one I want someone from this side just to go up and read the text, please. Someone that hasn't been up yet on this side. Who would come up and read the passage? You're willing? Thank you. Right over here. Good. Come right up to the microphone. Just face the camera. Luke 11 verse 13. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall... shall your heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit to us to them that ask Him. Amen. So, what would be the step? Ask. You're right. So you're asking for the Holy Spirit. Okay. Acts two thirty-eight and thirty-nine. Would someone from this side read the passage? There's actually two steps in that one. Acts two thirty-eight and thirty-nine. Acts 2, 38 and 39. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So the step is, the two step is repent. Okay, and yes. Be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Now, before we go to the last one, here's a problem that we have as Christians. Imagine that this little eraser represents a pet sin in your life or mine, something we really honestly like. We like it, but we know it compromises us in Jesus Christ. What we end up many times doing is, Jesus, I'm really, really sorry that I'm holding this. And we confess it, right? So I say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But then we do a strange thing. I'm sure in heaven, probably the angels look at us and say, what is this human doing? So they say, I'm so sorry I'm touching this, that I'm holding at it, that I'm looking at it. And then after we say, I'm sorry, we take it and we cradle it. And we hold it close to us until we get guilty again. And then what do we do? Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry I'm still holding it. I'm sorry I'm still looking at it and smelling it and seeing it, everything, touching it. Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. And the Holy Spirit tells us to set it aside, but we are not quite ready to do that. So what do we do? We go back in our seat of our life and we cradle it. Dangerous, dangerous. The Spirit of God, when He comes and calls us to repent, he gives us the courage to do something that seems impossible, to actually let go of things that you and I think we can't even let go of. He gives us the power to do that. Amen? And then he, we're supposed to be baptized because baptism is giving a signal. We had this in revival last week, right? You're baptized and it's a signal to heaven. I'm all for Jesus Christ. I'm ready for that new life of the Spirit of God. Okay? Let's go to the last one, Acts 5.32. If someone would come up and read that. Acts 5.32. Acts 5.32. Uh -huh. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. Ah, so what's another step? <laughs> 